up next on Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We're off to the center of commerce in the ancient world, cruising the Bosphorus in Turkey. Look, a castle. That's right. First it was Constantinople, now it's Istanbul. And it's overflowing with history. The sultans, the emperors, harem girls, and the royal jewels will take your breath away. Diamonds and rubies and pearls, oh my. Don't miss this amazing look at the sultan's treasure, plus an exhaustive tour of the magnificent Blue Mosque. Looks like we have a little bit of a wait. Cut to the front of the line and join me for an up-close journey through one of the world's most impressive places of worship. Then it's off to Romania for another royal roundup. The palace is not open to the public. This is really special to see this. In the heart of Bucharest, we go inside the king's palace for an exclusive interview with the princess of Romania. It's got a combination of Romanian and Moresque styles, which are quite original. Don't miss this rare behind the scenes look at a truly regal retreat. Then finally, last but certainly not least on the list of legendary cities, welcome to Prague in the Czech Republic. The history here is overwhelming. Don't miss it. This week from Istanbul, Bucharest and Prague. Welcome to Turkey. And today, Constantinople is called Istanbul, the largest city in the country. It is fascinating here. I mean, this was the center of the old world. The Roman Empire, the Byzantines, the Ottoman Empire, all here. The sultans, the emperors, harem girls, and the Blue Mosque. It's fascinating, and I can't wait to show it to you. Turkey is filled with amazing sights. Imagine ballooning over the ancient monoliths of Cappadocia or walking in the footsteps of Cleopatra and the Apostle Paul in the 2,000-year-old Roman city of Ephesus. There is definitely a lot to experience here, including its magnificent mosques, the beauty of its carpets, the sizzling kebabs, and the Turkish showmanship. All this and more really makes this country an exciting vacation destination. The largest city in Turkey is Istanbul, once known as Constantinople. And today it's a hotspot for tourism and culture. Istanbul has a very strategic location surrounded on three sides by water, the Sea of Marmara, the Golden Horn, and the Bosphorus Strait, the divider between Europe and Asia. So I figured a boat cruise was the perfect way to get acquainted. I discovered that until recently, folks here in Istanbul liked getting around here the old fashioned way. Before 1973, there were just boats going back across between the two continents. The first bridge between the continents was built in 1973, the one over here. And then the one behind me was built in the 80s. Wow, this is amazing. Now, to get your bearings, this side's Asia, then here's the suspension bridge, and ta-da, there's Europe incredible. This was once regarded as the center of the old world, the capital of empire after empire, Roman, Byzantine, and Ottoman. Rulers fought for control of this historic city because its location was ideal. Not only was it surrounded by water, making it easier to defend, but Istanbul was right on the east-west trade routes. A Bosphorus cruise is a great way to get a feel for Istanbul. And then it's time to hit the ground running. The Tokapi Palace is one of the oldest and largest remaining palaces in the world. Home to a long line of Ottoman sultans, beginning with young Sultan Mehmed II. After conquering Istanbul in 1453, he made his home here in 1479, right about the time Columbus discovered America. The gate of respect, only the Sultan was allowed to go through on horseback. Everybody else had to walk, so I guess we're hoofing it. The layout of Topkapi is typical of Turkish palaces. A series of open courtyards are connected by large decorative doors, all surrounded by trees and flowers, with an amazing location overlooking the water. Not a bad place to lie your turban. The most secretive area was the Imperial Hall, particularly the harem complex, where the infamous concubines and eunuchs were housed. Yep, the stories we've all heard and seen in the movies are based on fact. Fascinating, isn't it? Your imagination really starts working overtime. 
Now this is my favorite building. It has the Sultan's clothes and costumes, and it houses the treasury. Diamonds and rubies and pearls, oh my. Ooh, the Sultan's caftans, many embellished with real gold. Caftans and the Sultans themselves were huge, as the Sultan always wanted to appear larger than life. Also here is the Topkapi dagger, remember the movie? With huge emeralds and other jewels. And my favorite, the Spoon Seller's Diamond, worn right in the center of the Sultan's turban. It was sold for pennies by an unsuspecting peasant who thought it was glass. The Topkapi Palace, definitely on the you gotta see it list. The other gotta see it, the Sultan Ahmed Mosque, better known to the world as the Blue Mosque, the symbol of Istanbul. With its gorgeous dome and impressive minarets, this is one of the most revered architectural masterpieces in the Islamic world. It's also extremely popular with visitors. Well, looks like we have a little bit of a wait. Built in the early 1600s by Sultan Ahmed I, the Blue Mosque is straight out of a fairy tale. Surrounded by six minarets, beds of colorful tulips, and a beautiful fountain. Inside, an inner courtyard is where you'll remove your shoes for entrance into the mosque. Under the dome inside, a rope separates visitors and worshipers. Carpeted floors and intricately tiled gallery walls are softly lit, however with bulbs today instead of the original candles. Now you don't have to wear a scarf inside the Blue Mosque because this is a museum, it's not just a mosque, and they say the government just can't keep up with it. What's interesting here is it wasn't originally called the Blue Mosque, it was the Mosque of Sultanat. And the people started calling it the Blue Mosque because of all the blue tiles. In 2009, the Blue Mosque was on President Barack Obama's Gotta See It list, as well as the Pope's, marking the second papal visit in history to a Muslim place of worship. Now that's an endorsement. Up next, discover another legendary city in Bucharest, Romania. Take a tour through Romanian history in the Royal Palace. This is really special. Nobody ever gets to see this. And then, while you're here, try the typical Romanian liqueur called Suica de Puna. At 42% alcohol, it's got quite a kick. Ooh. Here's a tip. You'll have to remove your shoes to enter a mosque, so wear socks and bring a plastic bag to carry them if you don't want to leave your shoes outside. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and don't forget to check out lauramckenzietv.com. Welcome to Romania, one of the most fascinating countries in Eastern Europe, less than 20 years out of communism. Now, you're saying Romania. I know it, but where is it again? Well, its borders are the Ukraine, Serbia, Bulgaria, and Hungary, and its capital is right here in Bucharest. Romania's largest city and capital is full of contrasts, and its history can be seen prominently in its architecture. During the Principality, beautiful ornate churches and Renaissance-style buildings were constructed and preserved, earning Bucharest the nickname Little Paris. But when communism took over and abolished the monarchy in 1947, large parts of the city's historical district were destroyed to make way for huge concrete government buildings. After the fall of communism, Romania became a democratic republic. But the country also retained the king, who was in power before communism. King Michael's family once again resides in the Elizabeth Palace here in Bucharest. And while it's only open for invited guests, I arranged to see just how royalty lives by taking a private tour of the royal home with Princess Margarita and Prince Radu. It's kind of spectacular in a way. It's the smallest palace in, in uh, Bucharest. Um, and it's got a combination of Romanian and Moresque styles, which are quite original. Built in 1937, the palace has a more modern feel than other Romanian castles. This is the dining room. It seats between 20 and 24 people, and I think what's impressive about it is that it's comfortable. It's not overly stuffy or formal. Now, King Michael still lives here, so the palace is not open to the public. This is really special to see this. And after King Michael passes away, the palace goes back to the government as a state building. From here, King Michael acts as an unofficial ambassador, helping to get Romania into NATO and the European Union. 
with intricately detailed fixtures and plush furnishings, the decor is definitely fit for a king. King Michael is unique in that when he was appointed to the throne, he was the youngest monarch in Europe. This is King Michael's private office. Now this is really special. Nobody ever gets to see this. And on his desk is something I thought you'd really like to see. The cover of Time Magazine when he became king at age six. And the caption reads, Bonnie King Michael. That's fantastic. With communism gone, the country has capitalized on some of the remnants of that era. During the communist years, this estate was totally forbidden because it was the private home of Ceausescu, the communist leader. Now, outside, people were standing in line for food, but inside here, he had five-star accommodations, his own private lake, a swimming pool, air conditioning, and a private restaurant for he and his friends. It was so nice that today, it's a private club. Was it Ceausescu who said, let them eat cake? No, he just said, keep them working. Since his reign ended, the city has taken great strides to rebuild itself and refurbish its artistic past. This is the old town area of Bucharest in the process of being rebuilt and renovated. Some of the buildings are done and some of them aren't, but it's definitely authentic. I mean, look at these cobblestones. They're very uneven. Some of them are missing. Now, what does that tell you about what kind of shoes to wear, huh? Now, this is a pedestrian zone. You're going to be doing a lot of walking. This area of Bucharest is called the Lipsconi area and contains the old princely court where the city got its start. In fact, one of the oldest buildings still standing is located nearby. Dating back to 1545 and adorned with frescoes and paintings, the old court church is truly a wonder to see. The church burned in the 1800s and one icon inside was left untouched. Now they say that if you come and pray to that icon, your wish will come true. Not far away is another of Bucharest's historic gems. This is the oldest inn in Bucharest, and on your way in, have a look down. These aren't cobblestones, that's wood. Mannix Inn was originally built to shelter traveling merchants. Today, it still serves that purpose, inviting travelers to take a load off and stay a while. An interior courtyard is surrounded by beautifully carved balconies and still has several rooms, a restaurant, and several bars. It also plays host to many fairs and festivals throughout the year. The rooms are very simple and very clean and the woodwork's everywhere, it's just amazing. Now, while you're here, try the typical Romanian liqueur called Suica de Pruna. It's a plum liqueur that's not too sweet, but it's 42% alcohol. And they say that you're supposed to have it before a meal and not after because it burns the grease. Well, at 42%, it's going to burn a lot more than, than grease. I'll give it that. Woo. Up next, welcome to Prague in the Czech Republic, home of the largest royal residence yet, with guards that make the ones at Buckingham Palace seem downright friendly. They don't smile. Don't miss it. Here's a tip. In Bucharest, the roads are excellent. Remember, it's illegal to use a cell phone while driving. Laura McKenzie's Traveler will be right back. Welcome back, and don't forget to check out lauramackenzietv.com. Welcome to Prague in the Czech Republic, one of the most beautiful cities I've seen in Europe. You know, some of it looks the same as it did 100 years ago. In fact, they call it the City of 100 Spires. Located in the heart of Bohemia, in the center of Europe, Prague has been called many things over the years, the Golden City and the Paris of the 30s. The city and its people take these compliments in stride as Prague's mixture of beauty, atmosphere, and history speaks for itself. It's the atmosphere here that makes it so difficult to describe, and it's what has made Prague a favorite location for many feature films, as well as a vacation mecca for tourists looking for something a little different. Perhaps one of the world's best preserved cities, the best way to soak up Prague is to wander around its intricately designed cobblestone streets. Hi. Looking at these cobblestone streets, they're laid out in such a pretty pattern. Well, it's not because the pattern was nice, it's so the bricklayer would have to expend the least amount of work laying the bricks. Isn't that neat? 
Prague's mismatched collection of Romanesque, Gothic, Art Nouveau, and Baroque buildings are fascinating, and a leisurely tour of its landmarks is like walking through a living museum. The old joke, if it ain't Baroque, don't fix it, doesn't apply here, as culture, commerce, and cuisine has exploded in Prague since the fall of communism after the Velvet Revolution in 1989. Taking a few steps back in time, let's visit the two symbols of Prague, Prague Castle and the Charles Bridge. Some say that eggs were mixed in with a mortar to give the bridge strength. Others say it was due to the timing of the construction of the bridge, which was scheduled by consulting leading astrologers of the day. Whatever the reason for its astonishing longevity, it's definitely a must-see in Prague. This has been a pedestrian bridge for the entire 600 years it's been here, except for a few horses and trolleys that used to go across. They tell you in the guidebooks to come early in the morning because it's empty and it's beautiful and you can get some really pretty pictures. But you know what? I like it in the middle of the day when it's busy. A lot of people, you have the vendors. This is when it's fun. One of the oldest buildings in the city central is my favorite, Prague Castle. For a thousand years, Prague Castle has stood watch over the city visually and literally. It dominates Prague's modest skyline and from its perch high above the river has the best known view of the city. Politically, the castle has been integral in determining the fate of Prague and the Czech Republic and still serves as a royal residence and the center of political power today. It's a great place to get a sense of Prague's history and to experience some of that pomp and circumstance that I love so much. The changing of the guard happens every two hours on the odd hour, but it only lasts about a minute, so if you're late, you're gonna miss it. But you know what? You can take your picture with them. Can't say cheese. They don't smile. Another area of town dedicated to preserving the past is the Jewish Quarter. On the edge of the Jewish Quarter is the Old Town Hall and the infamous astronomical clock. Built in 1410 and remodeled in 1490 by Master Hannes, the clock has a dubious history. Legend has it that after Master Hannes completed his work on the clock, the municipal council had him blinded so he couldn't repeat his work elsewhere. For revenge, Master Hannes climbed into the clockworks where he promptly died and caused the clock to malfunction for 80 years. This is a big attraction here in Prague. At the top of the hour, everybody's here waiting for the clock to do its thing. So I'm standing here waiting, trying to figure out what time it is, and I'm just not getting it. And then I find out that it's an astronomical clock. You don't tell the time. It tells the phases of the moon, the days of the year, the seasons, the equinox, and the Christian holidays. So, when's Christmas? Here's a tip, pack a collapsible duffel just in case your suitcase is overweight at the airline counter. Laura McKenzie's Traveler, we'll be right back. One of the most unique features in Prague is their old tram system, which still operates today. You know, it looks like a museum in here, doesn't it? But these antique trams from the turn of the century actually work. In fact, taking a ride on one of these is just one more reminder that Prague was once quite the place to live. The trams are a great way to see the city, especially if you don't have a lot of time. All aboard! The trams are cheap and run on time, but more importantly, they're also a lot of fun. Is this atmosphere or what? You'll have so much fun on the tram, you might not want to get off. There's so much to see here in Prague, and it's all right there, just waiting for you to discover it. Make sure you bring good shoes, because once you get off the tram, you're going to be doing a lot of walking. 248 stairs. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't really climb them. I was acting, because here in Prague, they shoot a lot of motion pictures, and I thought I might get discovered. 
Prague is also famous for art. Artists have been creating here for centuries. I mean, it's a city that just inspires creativity. You can find exhibitions in the museums, or you can find them out on the street. Some are classical and some are whimsical. And trust me, all the art is in the eye of the beholder. Speaking of art, let's head to the market and see what local creations are on sale today. You never know when you're gonna stumble across a masterpiece. Whether you're trawling for trinkets, treasures, or treats. The Prague Flea Market is the place to go for one-stop shopping. This is such a pretty city, and I'm so glad I got to show it to you because it's the one place in the world I have always wanted to come back to. I hope you enjoyed seeing it with me and that you'll join me again next time from another terrific destination somewhere else around the world. From Prague in the Czech Republic, Bucharest, Romania, cruising the Bosphorus in Turkey. I'm Laura McKenzie. Bye-bye. Here's a day trip you don't even have to leave Prague for. Well, I've heard the best way to see Prague is from the water, so permission to board. Riverboats like the Elbus provide convenient and affordable cruises up and down the river. Since most cities were originally built up around the rivers, some of the oldest and most interesting buildings are best viewed while cruising by them. Some of the newest structures are best seen from here as well.